Hello, Internet. We have returned once again. Now, before we start, I just want to let you guys know, any kind of questions that you have for me, please feel free to post them in the comments. I would love to hear some new video ideas from you, the viewers. I want to know what you're interested in. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's begin. Today's video, we are talking about this. Give you a second to think about it. Come on, think of a name, shout it out in your head. I'll give you a hint. It's the most country-like country that isn't a country. That's a direct quote from CGP Grey. You know what? I'll just tell you what it is. It's Hong Kong. It is Hong Kong. Look at that. Look at that little thing. Hong Kong at the bottom of China. Now, there's a lot of phrasing going on here. You've got PR China, which means People's Republic of China, and then you have Macau SAR and Hong Kong SAR. Now, some of you are asking, you know, what the heck SAR is. Now, I did, actually had no clue what the heck SAR was. So I had to go ahead and look it up. And SAR means Special Administrative Region. The Special Administrative Region of Hong Kong. What the heck is that? I have no clue what that is. And you might be asking yourself why you care. Well, I'll tell you exactly why you should care. Okay? But first, we need, we need to understand what the history of Hong Kong is. Okay? So, the whole thing started back in 1839 with the nation of Britannia, or the United Kingdom, or the British Empire, whatever you want to call it. But China lost the first Opium War back in 1842 to them. So, as a result of this, uh, Hong Kong became a British colony, and I'm going to show you exactly why China lost Hong Kong, because the British were using ships like this, and the Chinese were using ships like that. <laughs> oh my god. The Chinese ships were just all wood and paper, essentially. They lit up like Roman candles. They just exploded on contact. They didn't even have gunpowder. Even though they'd invented gunpowder, they didn't have any kind of cannons. They were still using like bows and arrows. And the British were using heavy cannons, first-rate ships of the line. Oh, it was, yeah, it was bad. So as a result of this, Hong Kong becomes a British colony in Asia. Now, that's a colony with a little asterisk on it, so as part of the peace deal that actually happened much, much later, but over in 1898, the Chinese government and the British government signed the Anglo-Sino Treaty, which essentially gave Britannia a 99-year lease to Hong Kong. Now. They'd already had Hong Kong for f over 50 years before that, so there was already a lot of British influence there. And now they're going to have it for almost another 100 years before they'd have to give it back to China. So, yeah, and she clearly is Britannia's little sister with her massive financial buildings, her love of finance, her international trade, and her nearly identical metro system. Now... Hong Kong should be a country, right? I mean, it should be. It's got everything going for it. It's got a high GDP, it's got a high population, but if you ask China, it's not even close. And it's actually part of the one country, two systems policy. And the more clever of you in the audience might notice that it's probably one country, three systems with Macau, and... and I, probably would be one country four systems if you include Taiwan but uh yeah so how did this one country two systems thing come about in the first place and I'll tell you and I'm gonna butcher this name completely it was formulated or thought up of by Deng Xiaoping the leader of communist China at the time. Why did he think about this? Well, because he wanted to reunify China. And at the time, you had three distinct regions in China. It was the you know, autonomous region of Taiwan, Taipei, whatever you want to call it, Macau, and Hong Kong. And what he said is that there would be one China. So all of those regions would become part of China. And the distinct regions like Hong Kong and Macau would retain their own capitalistic economy and their own political systems, while the rest of China uses the socialist system. 
So here's my question to you, sir. What about that is communistic or socialistic? The whole point behind a communistic or a socialistic society is the fact that the government controls absolutely everything. When you leave a region to have its own economic and political system, they may as well just become their own country. They may as well be self-independent of you. And Hong Kong certainly has the GDP and the population to become its own country. And it is recognized as a member of several international trade organizations. So, you know, I, in my own words, I think it's just China's way of getting in on the money in the region. But, you know, whatever. So here's some cool facts that are actually really, really cool. It's a, considered an Alpha Plus city. So what that means is that Hong Kong is a key link in both the regional and the global economic systems. There are thousands of tons of cargo that move in and out of Hong Kong every single day and every single year. And, you know, she's very, very key. So Hong Kong has a GDP of $400 billion dollars which is equal to North Carolina in GDP. It's kind of it's kind of sad for for North Carolina. So Hong Kong has 430 square miles of area and 7.5 million people. You can't even see it on the freaking map of Asia. <laughs> I can't. Oh, man. And then you have North Carolina that has 54,000 square miles in area and 10 million people. He's got over 100 times the area and 2.5 million more people, and yet they have the same GDP. Like if you look at it on a map, you know where North Carolina is. You absolutely know where North Carolina is. Hong Kong, you could just say, oh, I don't know, it's in southern China. Like, somebody asks you to point to a map of the United States, and it's like, all right, tell me where North Carolina is. And you're like, um, sort of there, where that, where it is. You, you kind of, you know, you have the right area. But if you, if somebody asks you where Hong Kong is, and you say like, Southeast China, that could be any one of like 50 million different people. And yet the, they have the same GDP. It's, it's either, it, it's a great for Hong Kong and North Carolina, unfortunately, uh, you know, being called out. Bang, bang, shots fired. And it is the third most important financial center in the entire world after London and New York. So that probably kind of helps out that, that GDP. So now, in summary, there is Hong Kong. You can't even see it on the freaking map of China. It's so small. And don't even get me started on Macau. It's, it's there too. Just trust me on that one. It's got 7.5 million people packed in unbelievably high amounts of density. It is number three in the world in terms of financial significance, and it's run by Communist China. Whoopee! Now, what this means is that the future of Hong Kong can be very convoluted. So, it is, the way that I'm seeing it, it can go two ways. You can have communist decay, and what that means is that China comes in, and essentially equalizes all the populace. Or you can have huge financial success in Hong Kong to the point where it develops into an absolute mega city, like the city of New York. So, I mean, it could go either way. And unfortunately, the future of Hong Kong right now is pretty cloudy because only China knows what the future of Hong Kong will be. As we saw, there were a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, actually, there was uh, rioting in the streets because they didn't want uh, their own government to fall apart and uh, give in to the Chinese government. And always, thanks for watching. Please leave any kind of comments or questions that you have in the video in the comments. I will leave information in the video description. Thank you.